and hello. It's April the 1st, but this is not an April Fool's joke, because it's gone past 12 midday, so it would fire back anyway. The way how to get to the entrance of the way believe in a creator that loves you that is a very simple and succinct way of putting the basic basic believe in a creator that loves you and you know from that basis you could you know that's the entrance to the way and then you can just follow the path so anyway this video is about what's happened to our hearts and um, I'm not talking about our physical beating heart, but your core, your core of you. And I'm going to have some illustrations to help explain this. Then it's not that difficult. But basically, when you incarnated into your physical body, if that was whatever part of the pregnancy that occurred you were feeling God in your core, in your heart like full on like the bandwidth was was open at its right amount and you know if you're watching this video at the moment and you are likely to have no major concept of what that would be like so don't worry if you're not sort of remembering it right for most people there's stages to go in and um, to get back to that would be you know the uh, you know the ultimate I mean I'm not back to that yet right I'm edging nearer and closer, but I'm not there yet. Right, so, then, when you were born, and you came out into the world, the world you came out into is, um, you know, not right, is not, you know, a hundred percent there with the with the creator that loves us. And so what happens is the the baby being in a higher state than practically everyone around it, including the parents, right? Um, gets upset by this, you know. This is like well, they, you know, like I was in there in the tummy and it was all nice and yeah there are nice bits about this but there are some not nice bits about this and these these gather up and they and they um, upset the baby more you know more and then the parents don't know what don't know what to do they, they don't know how to deal with it they don't know why the baby's not happy you know they're happy. Like, why is the baby not happy? Being fed, being changed, you know. I'm not happy. So once you've got to, like, the terrible twos, or once the, the terrible twos, you know, and the, 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 the child goes through some pretty traumatic uh, emotions, and comes out the end of it, okay you know like the parents oh he's okay now you know he's stopped having these major tantrums now he's, he's kind of and what's happening is that the child has accepted the narrowing of this channel 
where the love flows from God. And it happens again after adolescence. Well, it's probably happening gradually, but around adolescence time, 14, 15, there's usually a pretty, another major one, you could call it the terrible 14s. <laughs> and obviously it probably varies a bit when people get this, but it's the moodiness, you know. Again, it's exactly the same, basically, as what's happening in the Terrible Twos. And again, that, that, that band that allows God's love to flow into your core narrows again. But you can get by on it, you know, you still, you look at older people, <laughs> you're still happier than them. So you put up with it, and you know you take your good times with your hard times. <laughs> then you know you get into your early twenties, and maybe you got married, maybe you took a job, maybe you did this, did that. Obviously, people doing different things. It's going to be a bit more varied, but the standard trend, especially for people in the Western world, is to carry on narrowing that band. And you get to about the age of 40 and you may have experienced that band become completely closed. And that's basically like a wave of depression that's cut off. And there's nothing worse than that, I don't think. There's nothing worse than that. You know, dying at that point isn't doesn't feel like it's a sting. I've experienced that for, you know, a few seconds on a few occasions and that feeling to me was like you've got to do something about this. So I was probably about 35 about that time, 35, 36, something like that. And, um, so I, you know, I did, I sought. Anyway, so I think most people have this in this called the midlife crisis. Um, and it is a crisis, you know, the, f the way they feel is a crisis. So, you know, most people find a way to gradually start undoing this this issue so for example going for long walks long walks can help because you've got one goal in mind one focus you're walking from a to b that's all you got to worry about ain't no other problem you're as long as you're making progress from a to b you can be content because you're achieving your goal. And while you're walking, just step, 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 you know, the mind can wander. You know, you're achieving your goal, so you're not in a negative frame of mind. So you're less likely to worry about stuff. You're outside, it's fresh air, you know, you can, when you can see far, that often makes you more um, optimistic. And so that can help. Right, and but ultimately, what's helping is you, in your mind, just allowing thoughts to to flow, to take their to take their process and flow. Now, a better way to do it um, is through meditation, because there you've got less distractions, and when you're still in your body you are more likely to feel what's going on inside and you can start to open up this your bandwidth to feel God and the bit about feeling God obviously just doesn't happen automatically and in a sense one of the main stumbling blocks 
for people is going to be this concept of we just don't know you know what we are we don't know the answers to you know is there a god and if there's a god how come bad things happen and you know and there's all all of that stuff all that intellectual stuff but you see a baby a baby isn't going to be intellectual about it is it and the thing is when you do feel some love you don't question it you just feel it because it's lovely so you're not you're not going to go oh hang on i'm not i don't well this is how it can work right so say um you know a 50 year old man he's you know he's he's been at his lowest point and he's he's found that he can um get by and he's not getting worse he's he's got a dog and he goes for walks and stuff like that right then he um then he decided one day what the hell I'm going to go to church and see what it's like down at the church you know and he goes down to the church and the priest there is talking about God and God and God and, God and you know, right and then so he's telling the story and he hears the story and then and then it something clicks in him and he and he feels something come into him, right? Feels something come into his core, some love. You know, and he obviously, you know, because he was hearing those words, that is what it's attributed to. And so he goes down that route then and he and he um gets into religion that way. I'm not saying that's going to bring him directly to the way because, unfortunately, the church doctrine is a bit weird. So say he got the, say he got the feeling from somebody else. Say he put on some music, some Beethoven, he's just there relaxing, and boom, he feels this love enter him, an amazing feeling. And maybe that, you know, and then maybe that he can't reproduce, he can't just put on the music again. Or the, the one who went to the church, you know, the next time he goes to church, he didn't get that feeling again, you know. So that's reality. But these people will hold on to that feeling, they will never forget it. And they'll know there was something to it. And a baby can't understand, a, bit, a little three-year-old even, you know, running around feeling God's love, but has no like concept of this and the and the thing is perhaps the adolescence drop is when you know is when that you know i found about that age that the the magic had been taken out of the world i looked at the world and i thought is this all there is to it you know it lost its magic it lost those possibilities So, that line, what I said at the beginning, will bring you to the entrance. Believe in a creator that loves you. And then, something else that came to me today, that sort of put into a, a line, if you like, is the amount we resist. You see... Let's go back to the terrible twos. The babies come out feeling all of God's love, but people around him aren't, or her. And this causes upset. This is like, you know, they're supposed to be the ones who know. They're the big adults, like the big giants, and they've got a problem, and I haven't. parents put pressure on us to be like them you know so like the baby's sort of feeling not quite happy so just decides to start crying at full volume but it's three o'clock in the morning <laughs> the neighbours will hear and you know so the parents are obviously putting a lot of pressure on the kid at that point to shut up even Smack. I did that to my son about that age. 
woke up in the middle of the night. He saw that his brother was in his bed and he started screaming that he wanted, to, he didn't want that. And, you know, I lost it. Uh, well, I hit him on the leg, like, twice. Uh, and it was horrible. It was a horrible feeling. It was so wrong with me. But I didn't know what else to do, you know. It's three o'clock in the morning. He's just screaming his head off. <coughs> so, where was I? Yeah, so the, the adults, the adults are conditioning the child. They are... You know, pressuring the child into um, not not reacting honestly from the heart. You know, just truly and honestly, whatever the circumstance. You know, they're fine when it's a happy mood, but when it's a negative mood, then no. So the the, the child is then trained to resist, and that's what happens after the terrible two is learnt to resist. So we're taught to resist. So that's what we've practiced all our life is to resist. So what we've got to do is undo all of that. And that's not so easy because you're, you're, you're having to fix things that you did back when you were two or three years old and most people can't even remember when they were 18, let alone that to age. You might have a couple of rehearsed memories that you can remember, but can you go back and remember exactly how it was to be you at that age? And that's, in a sense, simply one of the best ways to do it, is to just, you know, see, start going back a couple of years, go back 10 years, go back 15 years, you know, take your time over it. You've got plenty of time. But the way I like to work is just to allow what comes up next because I found if I, you know, if I, you don't necessarily know what the next lesson is you've got to learn once you're on the path. This is once you're on that path, right? Once you're on the path, you can take, take what comes because it's usually, well, it's always the best thing. But this is the way we're trained to resist. We, and it's, it happens so fast in your mind that you will veer away from a subject. You'll, you'll have a little quick snap feeling and, the, and what's called a fear block. So because you've trained yourself this way, there's this fear block and it's like, it's like your way that you've trained. So say if you did get smacked when you cried, right? So then every time before you, you'd you feel that feeling coming that you want to cry, that fear block would click off and it would divert you onto something else. You would start thinking about something else and, you know, you may often not even realise you've done it. So, you know, people are ready when they're ready. I mean, you can't force anyone. But what will force people is feeling that thing close, that depression feeling, it's, it's, it's so horrible, it will force people to do stuff, you know. I guess that's most likely why sometimes people do they kill themselves. Because they can't find a way out of that. So there is, this is, there is a way out. People do find the way out. There's slow ways out. And there's, there are fast track ways. Fast track ways. Uh, God has put something on the earth which um, helps a lot with this, and that's cannabis. And um, what makes cannabis different to other non-natural drugs like coke or speed or whatever is um, because it's natural it's uh, well for, you can't OD on it and because it's natural it's sort of um, it's not always you know it's not always a guaranteed I can smoke a joint and then be busy doing something and I'm not gonna feel high 
I'm not going to get much from it. But I smoke cannabis joint and then sit and do nothing, meditate, start feeling these feelings. My heart, the eternal part. Um, it's great for that. And obviously if you just smoke it every day, like I am currently, but when at the beginning when I was first learning that this could be used as a tool, I had a first time I had a two week break and then I had like just a puff or two. I had this experience. And then I was doing that for a while, ten days, usually ten day break, and then I'd get a little bit smoke it over a couple of days, high as a kite, um, and then go another ten days without it. But gradually I've come back to just having it as a staple. <laughs> um, some, I've had the occasional breaks of, you know, a couple of weeks or a few weeks. And I'll probably do another one soon, but uh, I think God keeps providing it for me because there's still work to do. <laughs> I do some soul work, another another matter. So when I'm not working on myself, I'm paying it forward. That's that's what I think I'm doing anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I have noticed my bandwidth widen. Um, in the in the beginning, it was it was pretty narrow. It was, I don't, you know, just an estimate, sort of that sort of, maybe less. Now I'd say I'm. I'm getting this. And it, you know what I mean? It's not absolutely concrete, of course. And right now, at this second, I'm not, well, now I am. <laughs> right? But when I started to say that, I wasn't. But you know, so, and and then, you know, when, when you're in a thin thing, which unfortunately most adults on this planet are, um, you know, you could touch for a moment, you know, there could be something on your mind that just brings you down that much that it touches. So, you know, I've noticed over the last four years that there's still been a negative thought that could bring me, boom, you know, down. But knowing that it wouldn't last that long and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, it was... It's been a journey, and it's you know it's going to be a memorable journey for everyone. This is the awakening of your eternal soul. If you do it while you're alive on Earth, otherwise you'll do it in the next life. But it does seem like there's a grand awakening going on. Um, so it could be that could you know. Once more people get going onto it, it could multiply, become like a tidal, tidal wave. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah. So you know, I still it still helps me to smoke cannabis that. That helps me sort of get into the soul feeling, and for example, like most of the time you're thinking, you know, I'm Stephen Hartley, I'm 42 years old, I live in Banbury, and these people around me go to work and do they do that, and I do what I do, you know, I do work, but not the normal nine to five hours, self-employed and stuff, right? And do I deserve to sit here and just meditate? Is that right? And then I think on another level, hang on a minute, I'm a four billion year old soul. I've been given this vehicle to 
have an experience on this planet for a finite time and that's that's mine I, I'm not a slave so I should be able to choose do I want I'm not dishonest I'm being completely honest with all authorities um, yeah I don't phone the police and tell them I smoke cannabis but <laughs> see that was just stupid um, they should legalize it anyway and it's slowly happening because there's nothing wrong with it it's very good stuff I did have epilepsy when I was little anyway so when I'm thinking about my soul and everything else that puts that more in perspective that puts it in that perspective and the cannabis helps to do that because it it kind of helps you yeah make well I'd say make a connection with you know with yeah with God <laughs> so, it does it does so could I feel the love without the cannabis yes I could but it's quite difficult you know you are influenced by what's around you the soul picks up on others so to be you know iron lion zion to be you in spite of that uh, cannabis is there and um, So it's either that or long walks, you know, so you can, if you want the fast track, there's the herb, and the leaves are different, and if you get, because you should get the natural stuff, the skunk is unpredictable, it can be amazing for this sort of work, and it can make it more challenging, it will certainly make it more challenging, it will be. But you'll be in a more, <laughs> uh, you'll be in a sense in a higher state to accept that those challenges. So maybe I'm weaning myself off, and um, but yeah, that's my journey, you know. Um, I'm just prattling on now. Well, I'm, I've already decided I'm going to cut this, so I might as well prattle on a bit more, because I did think there was more I wanted to cover on the old bandwidth. <laughs> well, why, why don't I just, like, because I do open eye meditation anyway, right? So, believe there's a God, believe in a creator that loves me. That's a great little mantra. I mean, I don't do mantras like I say, I let go and allow, but sometimes just to start yourself off, or if I'm struggling to be comfortable, I'll go through the um, tendencies of the soul. Like uh, the bad tendencies, hopelessness. You know, there's no such thing as hopelessness with God. Uh, dependence on other things, that's a common one with me, obviously. And so I've got to get into that viewpoint where. I'm dependent on God and only God. Then there's anticipation, you don't want that. Don't anticipate what's going to happen. And then there's forcefulness or... Um, what's the other word I used for that? Just trying to win, you're just trying to force it. Anyway. You can't force it. Just allow what is going to come. So then the, the, the good tendencies is to have faith, honesty, joy and enthusiasm. That's where you want to be. And then all the things you can love. Love yourself. Love others. Love your soulmate. Love God, mother and father. Love existence. Do you love existence? Anyway, so these little things can sometimes start me off. So then I'm sitting there. I'm aware of, you know, 
pressure and things in my chest area or sort of midriff and so I'm needing I need to be a bit more sensitive in my heart and and gentle you know gentleness has great power feel it and it's difficult to talk so you allow all feelings into the center into the core and you know when I was starting this a few years ago the feelings were more near the weren't near the core they were further away and when you resist when you resist at this stage when you won't feel it will turn to pain and for me it's been pain in my feet usually or on my bum or pressure in my back and the, the different stages of resisting and if you continue resisting you continue in the pain then you're suffering then you're suffering the pain and yeah sometimes it's good to suffer the pain for a bit because sometimes you'll get back into it you'll start Embracing the feeling in your, where you're supposed to, getting towards nearer and nearer your core. But it will tire you out in the beginning. It's time to knack me out. Totally. And sometimes I'm doing things that's for my own soul. And sometimes I seem to be doing things for others. That's another story. So... If I now think about believing a creator that loves me, I can feel love coming from Father. And I'm having to receive it, you know, into my core. And at the beginning I was thinking, oh, you've got to send some love back, but you just respond genuinely. I mean, you, by liking it, you're sending love back. But you can also. Sometimes I feel like, you know, when I've absorbed some love and I'm just so full of love and I'm just throwing love out. No, there's never a problem in where to spend your love. <laughs> so that still feels like it's love coming from Father. And having yearned for it, it would be wrong to not receive at this stage especially if you're doing it purposely you think oh, I can't bother at the moment uh, things always need to come in in the end anyway I just wanted to do mother as well and not make the video too long See, the heart hears and sees God. The heart is what is used. God hears and sees the heart. The heart hears and sees God. And I've been doing this, by the way, around other people. And I was when I was picking up my son from school and the kids were coming out and I was noticing a difference when I was feeling some God love from mother. People started seemed to be laughing and joyous and yeah. And it was slightly different when I was feeling it with father. It wasn't the same. I don't know, I think people felt more purposeful. So 
So they did definitely have quite different reactions. And when I wasn't doing either, it was moodiness. <laughs> and you know, awkwardness. So yeah, I was just like, because I'm sitting in my car and I'm just, it's quite big windows, so people can see me quite easily. But I'm just staring ahead, right? So when I was feeling Mother or Father God, they didn't, there wasn't any sort of reaction towards me whatsoever. Apart from any, maybe a few positive reactions. But if I had been doing nothing, and on previous occasions, because I've been doing this for a while now, so going back, when I wasn't, sometimes I would get, you know, because sometimes the kids made me feel a bit, I felt a bit awkward before. Anyway. So opening that channel, the more you open it, the more you'll have insights into how you used to be. So we've all been there, there's no nothing hidden. You can go all the way and you'll you'll experience again what it was like in the womb. It's not all easy. But it is simple, and it's certainly not impossible. And the more people who do it, I suspect it will become easier for others to come through. So, I don't think there's anything else to add. Except for remember that love begets love. And the opposite of love is nothingness. So, choose to love. <laughs>